Welcome to Talk Cosmos, the show where Sue Rose Minahan and her panel of guests bring you insightful conversations to awaken consciousness for soul growth. Come journey with us through astrology's energetic cycles and get ready to understand your path in the cosmic roots of the stars. Today is June 2nd, and it's Memorial Day weekend here in the United States. And locally, for people listening through KKNW there in the Northwest, and nationally, because it's international, of course, it's NORWAC, Northwest Astrological Conference. So have a great time to all of you folks there that are learning so many things about astrology, and that's just what we're talking about. We're talking about a subject called perfections. It's an ancient Hellenistic technique. But let's get to that with our great panel, because now we're ready for Kaleidoscope Visions. Associating current astrology transits to a real-life natal chart transit reading through the understanding of the sky's cosmic consciousness for navigating free will options, this is your Kaleidoscope Visions panel. I am Sue Rose Minahan founder of Top Cosmos since 2018, an evolutionary astrologer and student of vibrational astrology, a consultant, workshop facilitator, lecture speaker, writer, Dwarf Planet University graduate, charter member of Kepler Astrology Toastmaster Club, hold an AA degree and Associate of Fine Arts Music degree and Certificate of Fine Arts and Jazz. I'm an artist, musician, mythologist, and pursue esoteric philosophies. I'm Amanda Pierce. I'm a soul-centered astrologer, blending intuition into my practice. I believe the universe is always working for our highest good and seek to empower my clients in our readings. I teach a four-week series of empowerment-based meditation classes that connect you deeper into your own intuition and innate power. I work in communications with a passion for employee experience. I also have a BA in psychology. I'm passionate about healing and enjoy helping others create new realities and shift old paradigms. And I am John Chenworth, an astrologer from Seattle, Washington. I grew up in southern Arizona and was so obsessed with mythology that I concretely imprinted the Greco-Roman pantheon into my psyche. I still see those gods and goddesses infused into everything around me. My experiences of working with developmentally disabled and resource students for many years as both teacher and mentor has given me a strong compassion for others and has seasoned me with an exceptional reconciling energy. I have more than 18 years experience reading natal charts and continue to enhance consulting techniques by attending workshops and conferences. I use a unique blend of evolutionary, archetypal, and traditional astrological methods to look for themes in the birth chart for us to explore. I also enjoy penning poems and exploring Washington State on road trips. And like the Sufi poet Rumi says, You are the entire ocean in a drop. Hello, feather. Feather. (laughs) We're not feathers, we're drops. No, hi. Hi, Amanda. And hi, John. Hello. Hello. Excited to be here today. Yes, indeed. It is. I was thinking that. Indeed, it is. Indeed. Well, we have a new subject this time, and we also are doing a brand new um, layer, you could say, to our transit readings because we have a, I was going to say a passenger. No, she's not a passenger, (laughs) but a participant from last year in, I think it was September. Yes, September 24th. And so this is a follow up, which is most fascinating and particularly always. We will discover with her chart and that not whatnot. Now, John Chinworth, you can get a hold of skypathastro.com. And Amanda Pierce, her best contact is Amanda Moon Astrology at gmail.com. And of course, Talk Cosmos and info at Talk Cosmos works for me. And you can go to the website too. So, what are perfections? I know, John, you gave a little bit of info here. So, roll off. <laughs> Well, a perfection, uh, perfection happens um, at the beginning of, of each time you have a birthday that sets up the new year and the perfection lasts for that year and it travels through the houses of your uh, horoscope. So the, like the first house would be year zero and the uh, second house would be year one and so on. There you go. That's very helpful. You go through 
and you'll land on uh, a house at a certain age, and in that, that house will have a sign on the cusp and a ruling planet, and that ruling planet becomes mm-hmm. very important for that year, starting on your birthday, in transit and in the chart. Those were fascinating ideas, too, both transits and and the natal chart. So yeah, it, just, it really becomes highlighted in, in like everything it, about it. It's an ancient technique, folks. It's Hellenistic, which yep. many are familiar with. But this period of time, if you want to go back, is before the Common Era, a couple of centuries, until about the 6th or 7th, actually. Mm. So it's, it's a, quite an extensive time. And it... And the wheel really helps because it starts with the first year and at any rate. So for yeah, just print off that wheel, you can find it online. It's so handy just to be able to see and not have to count it all out. Yeah. Very handy. <laughs> so the 10th house that we're focusing on be, would be from your ninth year, your 21st year, the 33rd year, which relates to our particular participant, the 45th year. 57th, 69th, 81st, and for those party souls, the 93rd. It's also and, interesting to see the ones that line up with a major transit of others, kinds like uh, 57 uh, for this, for the person will be the uh, second Saturn return. So that, yes. might be, that might be a rather impactful year about what could happen. Indeed. And then two of it would be perhaps with these. Uh, Jupiter return that happens at 60 because it's every 12 years. Right. Many, many other as Let's go on. 10th house. According to Jeffrey Wolf Green, I just added this in Evolutionary Astrologer. We're, and we're just expanding a few ideas here. It's with Saturn. Saturn naturally rules that house. And as he was bringing up, it's a structural nature of consciousness that we bring into this lifetime thinking that we come back life after life. And therefore, it correlates to all the other houses in the whole zo- in the chart, which I had not realized quite. And it, we, as we know, Saturn has conditioning. So because we want control and it, we have ultimate control only for ourselves, it's responsibility and self-determination. So it's really a matter of, of formulating and de- what I'm saying is deconditioning the conditioning that applies for us. Essentially, it rules all time. So it it's a maturation process. Is there anything else generally we want to talk about oh, besides well, I, this? Mm-hmm. I love the this um, description of the 10th house. The 10th house also traditionally, it relates to your career. It relates to your legacy, your reputation, and just generally what you're known for in this lifetime. So, yes. Sometimes I think of it as like uh, your chart is the castle, and this is the flag flying on the highest tour of the castle. <laughs> I like that. And the word vocation came to mind. Amanda, mm-hmm. you reminded me. So it, because I, I often thought of it as only career, but the vocation that one holds deep in their heart. That's so it's a good really, word. Mm-hmm. Yeah, a powerful uh, house. Well, yeah, it's, here. Mm-hmm. Well, just one other thing about the tenth house. It's um, you know, it's 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 what we're known for, like I said, but often what we're known for has to do with how we relates back to how we feel about ourselves within. So that correlates then to the fourth mm. house because you know that's the tenth and the fourth house are opposite each other. So anything that's transiting the the tenth house is also impacting the fourth house. So There's a connection piece there of that. That's power. Thank you for that. There's also the trans. mm -hmm. Another thing that comes into play is the conditional parent and the unconditional parent. Conditional being the tenth house, Mm -hmm. unconditional, of course, fourth house, cancery house, uh, unconditional parent. And I think with that, that it's the one who is the strongest parent. Mm. In for that, yes. Typically the one that's the more dominant is oh, represented yeah. in the 10th house. Right. Yeah. <laughs> oh, which is interesting. I was reflecting on that myself. When you have two parents of so different, but one came up with ideas, which was my father for the 10th, and philosophies, which was Sag for the IC. So, When you bring these things up, like in a reading, it's really interesting how 
more modern times, you never know which parent's going to be that, that dominant parent. It could be mom or dad. So it's just really yeah. interesting how the client will think about it and, and say. I can reverse it. That's right. Thank yeah. you. Am I muddling things up or what? But that's true. Well, it, back then, <laughs> yes. uh, the father was a dominant figure and mothers were not. And now well, but really, to, my yeah. as far as like my father came f from Norway, so it could have been wow. uh, yeah. Sagittarius in the fourth house. And my mother mm. really was the more dominant person. Mm. One, mm -hmm. So yeah, here we have today and we're using that as a beginning point for transits. And this is based in Seattle at one o'clock, which we begin on this Sunday of the 26th. And out of bounds, that means beyond the 20, the, the elliptical path of the sun, which is 23.44 degrees latitude, north and south, the moon is out of bounds, which will be, I believe, until fall. I was advised. Liz told me that. And ve these asteroids have, the goddesses have been out of bounds for quite a while. Vesta of our hearth, Hygieia of health, and series of nurturing ourselves through grief. I, I love the out of bounds because there's opportunity to shift out of the patterns that you've been in. And like the the box that you've built for yourself with things, so um, out of bounds is kind of a, a wild card. Like it it has the ability mm -hmm. to really do things that are unexpected for the energies. I have three natal out of bounds planets, and sometimes I think it's like a roller coaster. <laughs> Well, I do they're, too. They're, they're at that extreme <laughs> off the plane of the planets, and they're like, there's like some kind of pull there. And they're all the inner planets Mercury, Mars, Venus. So I was glad to find out that I had which mine were that I do as well, because it did show the intensity. Hmm. I have Venus, Uranus, and Pluto. So they're all. <laughs> Yeah, you can really think differently when you have out of bounds planets natally and kind of not be swayed by the the mainstream or what society expects from you. So that's a Michael Bartlett, who's on the show yeah. at various times, wrote a book, Maverick Planets. And this is exactly although his is more on the angles, isn't it? Well, it's when planets so, are on the angles, yeah. Yes. But, but I, I think there's fact. kind of a similar feel. The, the out of bounds planets are they're, they're really going strong and they're making themselves very noticeable. So it's hard to in, tame those. In this chart, we have angular planets according yeah. to <laughs> this particular chart. And I wanted to mention that with perfections, historically it was used with whole house systems, whole sign, meaning that you would bring that sign to zero and any planet would be in it. However, it can also be used in a quadrant system and I'm using porphyry. So we're using the porphyry right now. And here at the 10th cu house cusp, because the 10th house is not always the, the MC. It can't be anywhere from the 8th house to the 12th house. But in this case, the 10th house is the cusp and the sun is conjunct Venus. So we are displaying our sunshines, aren't we? Mm. Yes. Yeah, love the the Sun, Venus, and Jupiter energy all together here in Gemini. It's really you can really feel it now with the the movement of Jupiter into Gemini. Like there's definitely a buzziness that's coming with that, and just a a mental uh, shift moving out of all that Taurus. A buzziness, I like that. Yeah, it is really important to look at that, isn't it? With Venus, Jupiter, and the sun all there within th three degrees on the other side. And so pretty wrong. soon, pretty soon Mercury too. I think right. early June, Mercury is going to move into Gemini as well. So we're going to have a lot of Gemini happening. It's a lot so of, with, um, a lot of energy, um, maybe wanting to be seen, uh, getting out there. Putting is the, and your seeing yourself, right. seeing yourself reflected because the Gemini really is looking for that partner that is reflected within them, not and, themselves. And be, willing, but, yeah, be willing to receive uh, grace or whatever, because Venus right there, like do it in a gracious way, right? With the heart, yes. Have and, heart. and there's Juno on the on the ascendant degree. 
Isn't it something? It is. She's That's asking more balance for to the next. alliances. Like, right. who's our partners? Who's our mar- What are we marrying? What are we? What's our alliance? And there's this T square, grand square with the moon, of which next week, of course, we'll have the new moon, and she's with the asteroids. I mean, she is squaring. Well, she's squaring the nodes. That also involves Mars, so there's some real action orientation here. And with Vesta, I guess she, that's the one, our hearth. So aren't we really trying to make our home, our new hearth, our... Mm. Mm. Here we have our participant, Tiffany, or Tiff. Born December 2nd, 1990 at 11 31 in the evening in Carlsbad, New Mexico. That's mountain standard time in the winter. And she has her son right down at the angle at the IC in Sag and a, and a, a full moon phase because it, she just passed a full moon. The moon is in Gemini. She too has out of bound planets, her moon, her Mercury, and Uranus, which are very interesting because they do show up in different configurations. I don't know how much we want to get involved with this. We did talk about it a great deal in September 24th, but is there anything that stands out? Want to talk the about. Sun and Juno and Venus together there in the uh, fourth house. That's like the transits of today. So those planets um, that are highlighted today are highlighted in the natal chart as well. They, they they come together in the natal chart, right? Yeah, and here we have the two charts together, and it does show that um, Juno's right in her first house. And if you did the perfections, it would be totally in the first house. I mean, by perfections, we are with the whole sign, but we're not doing that. Here, her 10th house is being ruled by Gemini, which is Mercury. And Mercury is, as of today, in orb of Vesta, one that is out of bounds and wanting that hearth at home, rephrasing. Ceres is conjunct south node. There's some kind of release of perhaps grief to, to re-nurture herself, perhaps. Um, there is a sense of loss tied to, tied to past. Um, series often brings a sense of loss. So exploring that, uh, meditating on that, seeing what that is. And going forward, yeah, because it is a, in a sextile a connected to Jupiter of new beliefs in in the 12th house of what you really don't have total control over. But as, she is... a farming goddess, we're also getting into uh, what uh, things to that I used in the past to improve my health aren't working now. So a, a, a rethinking of routines and how I uh, ultimately take care of myself. There, so mm-hmm. Tiffany has a lot of Capricorn energy in this chart. And you can see that down in the fourth and fifth house, Mercury, Uranus, Neptune, Saturn, and the North node all in Capricorn. And and Sue, you mentioned that both Mercury and Uranus are out of bounds. And Capricorn is typically a very structured, um, traditional energy. But here with that, that out of bounds quality and both Uranus and Neptune, um, it's like rethinking how you do structure things and how, um, how you show up in society in a way that is less focused on what society wants from you and showing up in a more authentic way, which correlates with her son and Venus in Sag, um, mm-hmm. which is you know much more about being authentic. So kind of moving away from that traditional 
qualities in this lifetime and and Pluto has been going over her north node kind of amplifying this and transforming helping to transform that for her so I think that's a big that's been a big focus and it, it's interesting too with the Capricorn we're going to look at that 10th house perfection which is Capricorn energy in the 10th house so it's coming up again and all this Gemini is in the 10th house as far as the perfection. So she's really expanding her philosophies, getting heart centered and using her powers connected to her own uh, will uh, self, all with that energetic Mars that's sitting up there. And I will say too, yes, about the cap, cap Saturn, transiting Saturn is trying her natal Pluto in the water sign, they're both in water signs of Scorpio. So there's a tremendous flow of, 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 of cooperation, you could say, towards these changes that she's making. Yeah, Saturn's really supporting that, that transformation of Pluto in her chart. Mm -hmm. And Pluto's in the third house. That's the Gemini house. So again, she's got oh, yeah. all this Gemini energy and she's making some, some shifts um in her evolution through this lifetime and how she um how she gets curious and how she takes in new information and and open mindedness to new information and so important because the natal mercury is in capricorn which of course looks to saturn and the transiting saturn should we bring tiff on john did you have anything you wanted to say or shall we just bring her on right now go ahead okay Sure. Nate, if you would have <laughs> Tiffany join us. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Hi, Tiffany. I know that it's Hello. been a big week for you and back. a big. Lovely to be back. <laughs> yes, it is. I'm Thank so glad you you're interested. That to go deeper into these readings and see what has transpired since September. Yes, as what we've said just at this point, please share anything. We have in about five minutes, and then we'll take a little break, and we'll bring you back. So just right. please share with us. Like, there's, uh, a, mm -hmm. oh, there's so much information that is really key in the transitions that have happened from then to now, and especially in the nurturing myself through grief, the way that I perceive grief and perceive life back in September compared to now and the changes that I've made, it has been a huge shift because I've been able to go from taking in information and feeling guilty about disrupting traditional patterns to excited about standing my ground on my own map and able to advocate for myself and for what I believe in and for what, what I feel unites all of us as a human race in a much different way. I feel more grounded. I am able to use the concepts that I know and understand as a massage therapist um, and somebody who's studied how the mind and body work together that all it takes to nurture ourselves through any moment, no matter the challenges, no matter the obstacles, is a shift in focus, a shift in breath, to, to really truly be present with our bodies, and a shift in feelings. So mm -hmm. if we're having a difficult time processing what we feel, if we will just take the time to slow down and really tune in with our bodies, we're able to shift the way that we see and feel about those things consciously. And I am getting certified in life coaching to be able to support people even, even deeper into this because on a massage table, it's a much different dynamic and you're not, you're not allowed to give any advice that way. But if somebody's struggling with something specifically, I love being able to, to help support them through some of those those things that their mind and body might not exactly be in coherence of because our bodies are always working to bring us back into balance. And 
life is working with us, for us, to help us to do that. Because our lymphatic system actually doesn't have um, an internal pump. It is an atmospheric and a movement thing. So being able to truly integrate yourself into the present moment and not have the stories of the past run what you do in the present moment is really significant to being able to move forward at Even if you're slightly fearful of the unknown, you're still able to immerse yourself in the newness, knowing that you have those tools and that your body and life is guiding you through so many various aspects, especially if if you are open to receiving that guidance from your body and from life. Thank you, Tiffany. That is very special, and it does relate... I won't go into all of it at this moment because it is time for a break. It was perfect. We started just a mite late. There was a few technical things. But what I love to hear you bring forth was what we had started off was 10th house, which can be, I didn't bring it up, but feeling guilty because of human laws versus our conditioning and releasing all that. And this whole idea of the body, which is earth, earth earth-based. Thank you. We will be back and discuss this further. We'll be right back. This is May 26th. Thank you. we take a break from this week's edition of Talk Cosmos, let's take a look at this cycle's archetype. We are currently in the period of Gemini. By leaving a cycle based on physical form, integrated through spirit, the energy of Gemini connects spirit with matter, focused on communicating and defining the external. Gemini is a mutable air sign signifying flexibility. Gemini duly focuses upon teaching and learning in order to synthesize the world one lives within. This is Martha Norwalk. Every Sunday morning, beginning at 9 a.m., thanks in part to NewProSupplements.com, we cover the world of animals. This week, June 2nd, it's Shelter Rescue Sanctuary and anything that helps our Animal Friends Sunday. We'll check in with Meow Cat Rescue, Help Animals India, Extra Time with Animals 24-7, and an invitation to Ananda's Linwood Community's Open House. Martha Norwalk's Animal World, Sunday morning, 9 a.m. to noon, right here on Alternative Talk, a.m. 1150. Talk Cosmos brings insightful conversations to awaken consciousness for the soul growth with hour-long programs every Sunday at 1 p.m. Pacific on KKNW. Talk Cosmos weekly programs are also available to watch live on the Talk Cosmos YouTube channel and Facebook page. While you're there, make sure you click the like and subscribe buttons so you get the full Talk Cosmos experience. Or if you'd rather listen to the show archives with audio only, the entire podcast collection since 2018 is available on most podcast carriers. And to find out about upcoming programs, sign up for the newsletter at TalkCosmos.com. So grab your coffee, tea, or kombucha and enjoy the show. On the path to good health and well-being, Alternative Talk 1150 is the station for you. Hi, and we just at this moment bring up, oh my goodness, what happened there? Uh, let's see. Okay, it's a half hour, and I just wanted to bring up Somewhere, where are my slides? Oh, my goodness. Okay, here we are. Yes, John Chinworth is at skypathastro.com and Amanda Pierce at amandamoonastrology at gmail.com. They both do astrological readings, such as myself, and you can easily reach out to either of them. And I have a few announcements, but do you have any particular classes, or shall I continue? Amanda, are you doing a meditational Not at this time, just open to readings at the moment. Okay. And John, I know you're on a new panel that's coming up with me about the USA. That'll be in, we did it on Chiron and we'll do it again with July. 
in july but, yes yes but if you have any other speeches that you want to bring up or shall i i'm just uh, doing readings right now so okay well i have a blog and it's weekly and you can get a hold of it at online or at sign up for our newsletter and also Substack. and in addition i'm doing astrology star sisters talk over tea it's a for me i'm once a month with liz muchette on her youtube channel we just we're going to do summer solstice coming up we just did jupiter and gemini and thank you always everybody for tuning in to us and subscribing whether to the channel or to the newsletter and i am working on a little gifty to give to people for signing up it's just a little glitch with mailchimp which we will work out so i I am thinking, before we go back with Tiffany here, that you had mentioned, and rightly so, Amanda, about Pluto. Because last year she had three transits over that last degree of Pluto. And there's one coming up in September through October that will be in that last degree, but it won't go exactly to zero minutes, which hers is. It'll be probably all of 21 minutes away. So it'll be very close. It will be greatly felt, but again, not totally exact. Yeah, and I just wanted to say also um, what Tiffany said that right before the break was such a beautiful example of what a Pluto transit can look like because as Pluto is transiting her north node, it's also opposing her south node which is in cancer and all of that like um emotional release and taking care of the body and her south node is conjunct chiron which is has a strong healing element uh and is all of that cancer is ruled by her moon and the moon is the body as well so all of that like work that she did to um transform and release on the south node and uh, helped her shift into new structures in, in that North Node in Capricorn as well. So I just love it that. Is take, yes, and taking responsibility. I know there were some quite a few life events that happened, which always is the case. Pluto, when it works, has things come up in your life that you didn't consider that she might be sharing with us when we bring her on in just a moment. And I wasn't sure when to bring this particular slide up, but it is the idea that from the last time we talked with her in September, in December, right around her birthday, there was this final uh, conjunction with on her North Node. So now, as it's in Aquarius, but there will be this brief month, you could say, where it will be once again directly in her sign and then the whole shadow period will be over um, next February. But let's go back to her. Tiffany, if you can come back. I'm here. Can you hear me? Yeah. Now, what we want to focus on, if we may, is that 10th house is a culmination. It's a culmination of everything. And it is really how you're stepping up to your vocation, which it sounds like is a massage therapy, which I believe you just graduated from. Isn't that right? Monday? I Yes, I just passed my licensing exam on the 20th. Congratulations. Congratulations. That is, Congratulations. Yes. I mean, isn't that looking at that Saturn there in the seventh house? And when you said about uniting us, I thought, isn't that a beautiful way of expressing Saturn in Pisces? That's and, awesome. Yeah. And when Saturn starts to transit above the horizon. So it moves out of the sixth house and into the seventh house. This is often a period where your career starts to really take off and develop as you're moving up towards the top of the chart and towards that mid heaven in the highest part. Um, so this is a great, great timing for you. You're right, right on track with the universe. That's, that's amazing that this part show you all of that because it's actually taken, it's been a four and a half year process for me to finish this. I was mm -hmm. supposed to have graduated in 2020 and COVID shut us down. And then our instructor passed away in a, in a car accident. 
Oh. And then wow. this year, it's February, my little brother passed away also. So oh. walking through the grief and through those major life events that you cannot prepare for has definitely been a tremendous part of this. Yes. And taking and- taking care of our bodies and our minds as a, a cohesive unit, not as separate from each other, because we are part of Earth, right? And then the understanding of the planet helps us to kind of go beyond those boundaries, like what you're bringing up about how our minds work and how we can either get stuck in patterns or we find a way to empower ourselves to break those patterns, even if they do go against tradition, so that we show, look, there's a different way where we all get to be true to ourselves and true to each other. Yes, that's perfect for health. having Mercury uh, ruling your uh, your 10th house. That's what I was thinking, too. Exactly. So for this year, Mercury is kind of in charge. And Mercury says, has have a radically open mind, uh, be willing to learn new things, open up your mind, and, and, and take in information and see what's right. out there. And, and so air. On. And, and, and yes, also, air. Tiffany, yes. and about air. Like you brought up this idea of shifting our whole sense of time. I mean, Saturn is time. And it, you know, ruling here too, that that with air, that Mercury rules not just your 10th house, but your ascendant. And so using air, that air sign to shift that body and bring you to the moment of time rather than the past or the future. Right. It's very important yeah. because whenever we're present and we're attuned to the now, we are way more receptive to how life is guiding us through all of these things and we feel more supported on a holistic yes. level. We and it is interesting to hear we you... Don't fall into those patterns of grief so easily because we see that we are we're being held and walked through all of these obstacles that come forward to challenge us it is healing i can see that with this whole energy and also very philosophical i can see that as we speak jupiter quite evident here as far as forming a belief pattern. It's important. All this is culminating. I want to use that phrase again to bring focus to the 10th house. Do you have questions? Let's look at that. I want to give feedback between us if, for you. I, I would like to know how y'all interpret divine timing because this is what it feels like to me is that Life is with us in every moment. If we are open to lean, leaning into that truth, that we don't have to be held back or permanently affected by anything that we've been through, if we're willing to lean into that and how, how we ourselves do embrace the sense of timelessness and our own capacity to create life by intention instead of by default, I, I would love to know how you interpret that as, as far as the astrology is concerned and our connection with the planets and with, with Mother Earth. With, uh, well, it's- with divine timing, I, I, I think of it more like it, what astrologers know is there's a synchronicity going on, which seems like really weird and divine and everything, but it's just, I, I think of it as a synchronicity that's happening because time and time again, we check these transits, we look at birth charts and so on, and, and these themes come up. And That's let's go back. About astrology. <laughs> let's go back to what our subject is for today, and that is as of your thirty-third birthday, which was December second. This entire year, until December second this year, in this particular focus is on that tenth house. Now, in that tenth house, it's ruled by Gem- it's Gemini, meaning what is circled there at the top of the chart. There, all those are in the essentially. It, it being included, even though this quadrant house doesn't show it. So Jupiter at, is transiting that 10th house the entire time because it's in Gemini. That means your belief systems are all adding into this picture, both natal and 
uh, transiting. And Venus, which moves a little bit quicker, and of course the sun. But all of those are going, have been connecting with your Mars, which is your energy uh, dis forward, your uh, assertion, your drive, drive to do. The world doesn't work unless we make a change, unless we act. Evolution is because of one act to the next act. We must act. And the moon is there, the emotional body. So what I'm getting at is you talk about timing. We're, that's the focus of your head or your whole soul this entire time. And timing is, has everything to do about Saturn. Ta Saturn is time. It's the last planet that we see. It takes 29, 28 to 29 years cycle. It's a maturation process. Yeah, and and so this has been going on for almost half of your <laughs> perfected year. We're we're almost at the halfway point in through this tenth house perfection, and so it, with it is a focus on um, on career and vocation, and a focus on the moon, which is um, your well being and your body and your willingness to be open to new ways of um, thinking about things. And so all of these planets now coming through that the sun, Venus and Jupiter are gonna be adding to that um, potential for um, a shift in the way you're seeking knowledge. So, just keeping it, keeping your mind open and continuing with that. But it all, you're, it, everything that you've been saying today has already been fitting into that um, 10th house perfection. And um, it will start to shift into next year's perfection as well. And Sue and John, about what time do you use to look at when it's going to start shifting into the 11th house for her? Oh, Sue, it looks like you are muted. Okay, rats, sorry. From what I understand, because there's different techniques, we're not talking about a solar return. A solar return is when the sun returns to that spot. And you sense that probably about two, maybe three months ahead. And for another nine months, it's like a whole, its own span. There's many layers. It's like a cake that has ingredients and different layers to themselves and decorations and everything else is one way of putting it or a garden with many different flowers or paths and spots for birds and everything it's not just one focus however to understand anything we have to kind of drill down to one idea and this is my slides keep jumping i'm so sorry so asking about the next one which i did bring up i was wondering myself it will be on her birthday, December 2nd, and it's in the 11th house, which is ruled by the moon. So this year is being ruled by Mercury, the thoughts, the, the connections, the communication, the, the siblings. You know, Gemini is siblings also and, and learning. And when it comes to the 11th house, that's going to be networking and groups. And it's your tribe. It's a closer knit group. And it's it's nurturing in food and nurturing in your emotional story. What is your story? And it's changeable. You know, the Mercury is changeable. Mercury, as we know, rotates, not rotates, but it, uh, it goes around the sun three times a year. And But the moon every month is going through a new sign. So it's going to give many, many changes available and deepen that growth and healing of yourself. Yeah, it's interesting and how um, the 10th house perfected year that you're in right now has a focus of the moon. And the, the next perfected year, the 11th house, also has that moon focus because it's ruled by the moon. So you're going to be continuing with all of this um, this emotional piece that you've been going through. I, I think one of the big shifts, like Sue pointed out, is that 10th house, the focus is more on the actual career and vocation. 
and the 11th house, you're shifting into more about the creating that community and kind of maybe that client base that's going to form that community for you because of because you're, you, you're thinking about things differently and what what community means to you. And so that's going to be, um, I think, a deepening piece to your practice. Yes. And it, because of that, that's linking about this retrograde with Pluto that's happening September 3rd or something to October 11th in Capricorn that will really help once again remobilize your sense of it's in the third house, perhaps how you're coaching. You're talking about you wanting to be a life coach. So that when November comes and it's it's going po- uh, direct again, it, it will be, or it's not, I, it won't be direct. It will be direct. It'll be an Aquarius. So that by the time your birthday comes, which is right here on the second, you'll be able to have a new idea perhaps of how that healing is in I'm sorry to pause here so much but I'm looking at the chart because I'm noticing too natally you have Chiron and the south node so it's going to be an enormous shift on your own personal healing you went through healing but what is healing healing is using all the parts of ourselves and somehow making what was just our own demise. It seems so that we could not, and in your case, it's in cancer, perhaps part of the family, that that you regroup, you you make that useful to everybody. Go ahead, yes. I think that, I think Tiffany's done the hard part of that healing where with the Pluto transit that's gone over her North Node and South Node and Chiron. And now... She's gone through all of that and she's still working through processing all of that stuff that Pluto came up. And that's going to be part of that 11th house perfected year journey with, with Chiron there. John, it absolutely absolutely ties back into where we started also with the service in our first reading, because I was looking at how to integrate what I'm doing personally with serving specific needs in the world with um, the domestic violence and the anti-human trafficking movement and being able to integrate these shifts in myself and understand how the mind can create a new story if the old story is limiting um, and help people help coach people out of those situations to life after to actually integrate their healing and not just cope with what they've been through so that they rebuild an an absolutely new foundation for their life and a completely new structure where they're loving themselves first and foremost. And they feel that support and that balance to their life. That's beautiful. And then, and so this, so when you shift into that 11th house, you'll be using all of this knowledge that you've gained to help others heal. And that's a big part that's the Chiron that's showing up in the 11th house that, that helping others to heal and, and giving forward that gift. Indeed. Yes, Here. Yeah. I've been, I've been helped tremendously and that's, that's usually how we heal the best is whenever people have shown up for us and it doesn't even have that, um, that intention to, to really make those profound shifts, you you have somebody showing up for you saying your life doesn't have to be like that. If you want something different, we're going to help support you to your new life after. And your healing happens organically because you see like there are truly safe people in the world and your body organically is able to process and offload all the rest of what you went through that distorted your perception about what you had to hold on to and how you compensated for your pain in the past. John, do you have a thought? Oh, I'm just listening to the conversation. I don't don't know what to add. So this has been really Oh, that's okay. I'm sorry. I I wasn't quite sure. Sorry, I'm so quiet. (laughs) No, no, it's good. It's good. It it works. It's It's, fine. 
It's, it's great. And it's just great to hear, uh, Tiffany, where you've been over this last like half a year, I guess, since we last met and nine months, nine months. Okay. And yeah. And I mean, to have gone through the nodal, that nodal energy of your direction and still involve it on a new plateau it's most fascinating because you went when we first talked to you you were in your ninth house you weren't in your tenth house so we're straddling three houses here as far as our perfection just looking at this one emphasis and with the ninth house it would have been ruled by of course uh before gemini is taurus which had been your values you would have been thinking values and Venus and philosophies and and learning, higher learning and all this. So then we shifted to your vocation, which is Gemini. And with Mercury, which is also about siblings and your transformational is in the third house. It does involve siblings and in Scorpio. So it's sometimes life and death is very literal. And and some of our, we can talk about the negative uh, experiences in life that are hard, you know, whether it's sex abuse with trafficking or whether it's death. But yet all of these ex- profound experiences are, are catalysts to, to help reshift how we can use and and nurture other people. And you have a tremendous gift and and wealth of of depth for that. I I really find that you're going to be using that nurturing self with your goals. It'll be fascinating to see. uh, Let us know how the networking works, but don't get ready for that yet. You're still working the vocation, you know, with the healing. (laughs) Yeah. It is. They are major catalysts and they definitely help. They, they force you into a decision of what you're going to create moving forward and how you're going to honor the way that life continues. And it's such a great... Appreciate- I'm jumping How- in here. We, we have a minute, and you're absolutely right. What I really loved was at the very beginning how you brought up the idea of slowing down because all the Gemini, no matter what, we're in Jupiter for a year, and it's like slowing down to breathe at the moment and regroup and see what is out of the past and the future and all of that and to gain gratitude for that moment. It's really uh, in itself so powerful. And I thank you, Tiffany. We salute your progress and, and graduating and with condolences. Of- thank you for being thank here. You, thank you, okay. Well, it is Memorial Day weekend. It's a time to be thankful and a time to be full of gratitude for what we have and that is one another and thank you for everybody that's joining us and listening and to amanda pierce and john chinworth this is enjoy your 10th house thank you for joining an insightful conversation on talk cosmos the show where sue rose minahan and her panel of guests awaken consciousness by connecting soul growth patterns with astrology's energetic cycles be sure to tune in next sunday 1 p.m pacific time to continue your journey through the roots of the cosmic pathway